Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 79 of my Manchester United Football Manager 2015 Let's Play. And today, the board has come to me, um, the chairman, Ed Woodward, they want to propose contract renewal talks. And of course, that's amazing. And this is after I've made some, this is like exactly after I've brought in some nice guys. Don't forget Munir as well. It's been centered around, yeah, the new signing of um, Oliver, a straight swap for Mata, which is pretty good. And as you know, the only way it won't be a straight swap is when we'll pay 15 million after he scores 50 league goals. Uh, you might be a bit scared of that if he was a striker, that's a clinical finisher, but he's more like just a center midfielder with eight finishing. <laughs> so that probably won't come to be, at least in five seasons or something like that for the duration of this career. And I do want to say I'm probably going to plan another career because I want to finish this one. I want to finish it on a high, like maybe after I win Champions League or something like I mentioned previously. But I want to win a few, not just one. I want to showcase some dominance, not just one Champions League win. So hopefully you do understand that, but there will be a save. I'm not sure maybe to replace this one. Maybe I'll just focus on more on Bath City or whatever, but we'll see what goes down in the future. Uh, but here we're just going to, I'm just going to accept because I'm happy with, it. I just want to accept the deal and we'll push on. We'll view the offer, see how long it's here, yeah, 2021. So that's like, was that four more years or something like that? So that's all right. And I'll leave, I'll leave the default money, 100K. That's decent. Not too much and not too little. So we can save obviously a certain amount into the club, even though it's probably not a huge difference uh, because we are pretty rich at the minutes. And I'll just review the previous games I've played. The last game I played live, it was the Southampton game, 3-0. Uh, Simple result. Uh, the next two we played was Fulham. Again, an expected win, just a general 3-1. Richario Zivkovic, though, he stepped up and now he scored 15 league goals in only eight starts. Man, this guy, he is going to be killer in the future. Improving his probably weakest attribute, that's important for a striker. Jumping reach, because, you know, he has scored some headed goals, so he's going to be better in that way. Really good. He's looking great. But I wanted to record this game, and also, yeah, 2-0 victory against Liverpool. Was pretty convinced we could beat them, as we did beat them 3-0. And that was home as well in the Capital One Cup quarter final. We do have that coming as well, or the semi-final over two legs against Chelsea. That will probably be the next episode. I might try and get them two in one, but again, uh, it takes really long to upload two uh, two games in an episode when you play on 3D, so I'll cover it maybe in two episodes. Uh, we'll see how it goes down after I record this one anyway, which is the FA Cup, I thought. Um, I will record this. So it's not going to be a certain amount. I just want to let you guys know. It's not going to be a certain amount of games I'll play off camera. I'll basically yeah, play off camera until we've got an important game to play. Like a cup game like this... Or against a top team. Just something like that. Because I want to progress in this series. Obviously, Champions League is the key thing now. And like I said in the previous episode, for it to be more of a story. So, uh, we offer that, con or we accepted the offer contract. So, I'm really happy about that. Because that lets me know they're pleased with how I'm performing and also my transfers. Even though people think, oh, your transfers are bad or something like that. At the end of the day, the only person or people I have to impress is kind of the board because if they're disappointed with my transfers or something like that and they think a negative reason because of that like that could yeah impact my job but it hasn't done my confidence everywhere look all cool, like player reactions everything like that is good uh, very happy with that job security there's not the only disappointment <laughs> the lowest disappointment they have is a draw against Aston Villa not even a loss so yeah, everything is going well. I'm playing the attacking football, give youth a chance. Squad harmony is good as well. That's probably one of the most important things to be high, not for the board, but I mean just for the club in general. Good squad harmony is going to help you play well, and I suppose that's why we've only lost one game this season. And it was an unimportant game because we already qualified in the group stage in that first position. And we've got Juve. That's going to be oh, that's going to be huge. That's when Champions League, that's where it's going to come to fruition this series. Hopefully, yeah, we can get to the final once again, but this time win it. You know, last time, the disappointment last season of losing against Real Madrid, I don't want to face that again. And don't forget, it is January, so we are going to be getting offers for players like right here. Bayern Munich want Rojo. 
So I'll take away this. We'll see what we can negotiate. Yeah, where are now? See, I want money up front. <laughs> you know, I like to negotiate these for my deals, but yeah, I want the money up front, really, so I can do something with it right away. And he's actually got a release clause. What is it again for Rojo? Yeah, it's 25.5 million. So I'm just going to offer that. Even I think maybe a little bit more, but that's probably around his value. So if we go back, I'll put 25.5 because that's his, yeah, loss or yeah, minimum release clause. So look, that's hardly anything. That's nothing. See, they're just trying to... They probably don't have much, like, transfer budget right now, so they're just trying to snag a deal. But nah, that's not enough. It has to be above his value by quite a bit, unless there's a player we could swap for. But for me, it has to be a defensive-minded player because we've got all those midfielders and attackers already. Uh, Frank Ribéry, I actually tried to sign him on a free, but he didn't want to join, so that's a bit disappointment. Or a big dis um, yeah, a bit disappointing. Uh... But yeah, it has to be a defensive player. And I even checked out Jerome Boateng. He'll be a similar type. But he has no intention of joining the club. He's a world-class player. He can play a lot of positions in defense. See, even just for example, if I go back to the deal and I go player exchange and then I just do Jerome Boateng, exchange player, Suggest terms. Poor. Nah, they don't. They don't want to listen. They completely remove it. That's interesting. But nah, it's this is not gonna. <laughs> yeah, this deal's not gonna happen right now because it's just gonna keep going back and forth. Even ooh, I'll try and get maybe twenty three million. I think I have to get a good deal because a lot of you think that yeah, Oliver deal was bad, even though it's straight top for Mata and Oliver's going up and Mata's going down. They're like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's two different ways. But I'll go suggest terms. Uh, they're not nah. I'm gonna do an un unnegotiable, yeah, or non-negotiable, whatever it is. I'll just take all these off first, and I reckon twenty-two million. 22 billion and yeah non-negotiable that's what it is and we'll negotiate offer and yeah there we go and we'll see if anything comes off of that and all these i don't really care about don't forget about witzel as well yeah um he's doing not too bad obviously not overly amazing kind of like the first season for us like that low seven average rating first season he wasn't too bad uh, wasn't super amazing of course but he's okay and his his value is decent We'll see when he comes back next season. We'll probably sell him without a doubt. And this Joe Rothwell, 100% wages, might as well accept that, uh, would benefit from first-team football. And look here, Juve. <laughs> They're interested in Umtiti. He's a guy I'd maybe consider. Obviously, he was in a swap deal uh, with Nani, and look at that. That's, <laughs> that's another one. See, but that's something you forget about. That's what a lot of you, like, leave in your comments, would you have remembered that deal? We paid 14 million <laughs> plus nanny for him. So that's, again, that Oliver Mata situation. You forget about it and it doesn't really affect, like, that deal a year or so ago, a couple of years ago. It's not really affecting our current finances because we're such a rich team, especially uh, following on with winning the league. But anyway, going away from that, see, this is what I mean. This will be the same situation with Mata. I suppose you can say Mata is a bit better than Nani, but his name is like Lewis, isn't it? There we go. Lewis Nani. He's worth 7 million now. He's actually had a very good set. I've, I don't know why, but I've actually always liked Nani. I don't know why I let him go. I think because he was going down when he came back. He was on loan. We sent him out on loan. Oh, he's on loan already, of course. Yeah. He was on loan already. Like, if he was already at... I wouldn't have sold him if he started. But he is 30 now. He's getting a bit older. I actually, I've always liked him. Actually, one of my favorite players. But because of the aging, yeah, getting a bit older, that's the reason. But he's still performing. I'm like, he's one of the guys that I'm really happy about that he's performing. He's, yeah, I'm really happy that he's doing well. Like, over... Look at that. 105 caps for Portugal. 
amazing effort. But anyway, back to the point of Um Titi. He looks very good. He's he had a bit more potential, I think. He's still got a little bit more room to grow. Markings 18, so that's really good. He can play a left back as well. But that jumping reach is a bit yeah, disconcerting, and he's only started one league game. And I feel I want to shorten my squad. I really do. Like, if we go to selected info, you can see guys who haven't started too many games. Look, I'm Titi. In total, started four games. Anyone else? Okay, Oliver just joined. That doesn't count. Um... Munir just joined again, doesn't count. Falcao, so he only started three games. And James Wilson, who we sent out on loan now. So there is a few guys I do... Like, I feel like I should sell one guy here. Um, Titi could be one of those. <sighs> for defenders, or for any position, I'd love to have uh, the physical, at least one, to be higher than 16th. Have, like, that green attribute. But... Either way, see, I love this. I love negotiating. Like, I enjoy this more than playing the game, most likely. Or playing games. Because, you know, we are going to win most games. This is where, like, the squad rebuilding. And you always got to rebuild. That's something I love. That's why I like Football Manager. And it's probably more in-depth than Career Mode and FIFA in that way. Like, the squad building is a big thing for me. So... I just want to see who, again, player exchange. I want to see who Juve have available. Again, but <laughs> I, I said I want to sell someone, that I'm bringing in someone else. Oh, Juve, on, don't forget, think that we're playing them in the Champions League. Maybe we can get <laughs> steal one of their players. It'll be hard to do, though. Look how big their squad is, though. Wow. Kingsley Coman is decent. Yeah, he's on my shortlist. That's why... But again, we've just got other similar types. But look at all the injuries they have. Well, they signed Lacazette as well. Lacazette is a good player. But anyway, how about Chiellini? He'd be experienced, and he'd be good right away. Like, right now, he's better than Umtiti. And you would think that would be accepted. But he, and he's exactly the same kind of role. It's an interesting one. Now, I reckon, yeah, because right now I don't want to sign anyone else. I'd rather just let go of someone. Let's just put... Because I want to get, like, a decent amount of profit. 25 mil. Now, I hate when they go for this. <laughs> I know, because uh, I do that myself. It's a good way to get a good deal. But I guess if we make sure we get it over 12 months, that's not terrible. So, say if we put this one 10 million... And we put this one 12, or no, we put this one 14 million. So that's still 24 million in total. Nah, they don't think he's worth that much. A per league appearance wouldn't be too bad. Maybe after every 10 games, maybe I'll put a sneaky 250, 250k after yeah, every 10 games. That's not too bad. That's something I don't want in my clauses when I sign a player. So if I'm selling a player, and I know he's going to be a first-teamer for them, and for quite some time, because he's a younger guy, that wouldn't be too bad. And after league appearances, no, nah, I probably don't want that. But that's kind of in the same boat. I'll increase that to 5 million. And I'll lower this 10 million, and even lower this. So what's the potential getting here? See, that's potentially up to, yeah, 25. and Because you've got 8 there, that's 10, that's 18. Okay. Let's suggest terms. Oh, that was acceptable. I think that's a good deal. And I've got to get back. Sure, I said, like, I've got to do, yeah, um, I've got to do well because of the board. But I want to get uh, your, gu your guys as well, like, support on my transfers. And hopefully you think this is a good transfer. Because at the end of the day, we did pay $14 million to get him along with Nani. So, I wanted to at least get that back. At least a $14 Because that's... $14 million still more than he's worth. So, it's good to get that much. We get $8 million right away. $10 million, So, at least $18 million is guaranteed. $8 million up front and then $10 million over 12 months. Which is a short period of time. That's a year. It's not like over 48 months or something. So we're going to get that $10 million over the course of the next year. So that's decent. $18 million pocketed for sure. And then after league appearances, you'll think he'll play that many games. 50 for them. That's $5 million. And then every 10 games he plays in the league for them, 
250k pocketed and if he has a long career with Juve that could be very profitable for us the offer was too good to turn down so yes I can make some very good deals when I want to uh, so I'm th that's what I mean he's only 23 so he could be at Juve for a really long time and because he can play multiple positions that will yes yeah, step up his chance of playing more games you know, playing in two positions at the back so yeah leave your thoughts on that deal of course if it does go through um, Janko, yeah, we'll just accept that. We'll benefit for, and like I said, I want to get a good deal done uh, that you guys think as well, and should give you an update on our younger players. Um, Jordan Kirilov, he's got world class potential. <laughs> Look at that. He was a neat signing as well. If I want to maybe remind you of some of the good deals I've made. Look, two fifteen k for this guy, Jordan Kirilov. Um, at his best, he's going to be valued a lot more with world class potential, and some others. Um, Moreno. Uh, Colombian, 220k. Again, he's got potential to be a star. Um, who else do we have? <laughs> we sent all these guys out on loan. Lars Christensen. How much did we sign him for? Now, yeah, that was 1.2 million. But again, someone who's really good. Reports, <laughs> leading Premier League potential. Uh, who else did we sign that was on the cheap ish? Oh, how's Adama Traore going? He's on loan right now. Still looking beastly with his pace and his strength. Signed him for 2.3 million and worth 9.5 now. So that's a lot of profit. We could either... Because he doesn't fit into our formation. We'll probably have to train him to play a striking position. Now we're probably just... Yeah, he's a guy we're going to make profit on. Unless next season. Yeah, after we let go of Falcao and maybe Van Persie. We might introduce wingers. We might push those deep playing forwards into actual wingers. And play a general 4-3-3. I don't really know. But I just want to give you an update on a few players there. A few signings we've made. Oh, Rojo, they, yes. Oh, we could make some money here. And we could make, because we sell one, we could maybe go out to sign someone. Ooh, let's rethink. Let's rethink. 22 million for Rojo. I'm going to accept that. I am, because he said he wanted to leave. I've got to think about this as well. He said he wanted to leave at some point, I remember. So he may get disappointed if we don't let him go. I'm going to say, the offer was too good to turn down for Rojo. I rate him. Again, he's another guy I've always wanted to manage. He's that, um, before he joined United in real life, I've signed him a few times back in FM13 or FM14 and a few saves because uh, he's that left back and center back. I think he used to be an actual left back. Not 100% sure on that. Like, he's performed amazing for me. Like, yeah, for me, like, I'm thinking, why am I accepting this offer? But... <laughs> Yeah, he's actually excellent. And why am I letting him go to another, like, Champions League contender? But, like, right here, I'm trying to find, yeah, a negative in his ability. But he looks really good because he's strong, really quick. I don't know. What's his information say? Yeah, look at that. Yes, yes, here. I'm sure he told me that. He wants a new challenge. So we kind of have to let him go here. Or he's going to be really disappointed and low morale. So I've got to give him credit. He's helped us win leagues in the, yeah the win the league in the first two seasons. Um, so but that's going to give us money, selling him and Amtiti. Uh, for now, it's going to bring in at least thirty million and free up wages. So we'll see what's going to happen when does Kasenko join when he turns eighteen. Yeah, that's oh at the end of this season okay nice i can't yeah can't wait to get him honestly because again he's another with world-class potential but we paid a bit yeah a bit more for he yeah he's a bit injury prone but i like the look of him that passing the termination dribbling the passing and dribbling at his best are going to be 20s he's just going to be a killer passer can tackle as well and can create a really good mix i feel and also, in our under-18s, James Wilson uh, was the top performer, and it's not the James Wilson you think. Uh, if you can't remember, <laughs> yeah, we have a James Wilson in the reserves. That's a striker as well. It's funny how that happens, but he doesn't he doesn't have great potential. But he's got worth-keeping potential, if that makes sense, worth making a profit. Like, he's got potential to be a good Skybet Championship striker in the future. Like, we could maybe make a profit from 500k to a million or something like that. It just really depends how he develops. We can nurture him in a guy. We can, like, again, like I said previously, I talked about this. What do you think about this as a feature in Football Manager in the future? You got a young guy with maybe not the highest potential in the world, like you saw.
potentially be a good championship striker in the future. But he's absolutely killing it at under-18 level. I think his potential should be increased. Because when a player is 16, you don't know how good he's going to be. And if he shows you in the... Like, say if this was real life. Say if the previous season he wasn't too special. Just had, yeah, low potential. But then the next season, he absolutely dominates in the youth leagues. And yeah, scoring 17 goals in 25 starts. He should get a boost in his potential. Leave your thoughts of um, in that anyway. Um, I think that makes sense, but you might completely disagree. Leave your thoughts. And also, uh, there's a Bronzevsky wants to increase his loan or extend the loan for how long or to the end of the season. Okay, I'll accept that. It's great for him. Like him and Preslin could make appearances next season for us. They're both out on loan at Cardiff, and they're both playing well. Look at that, three goals. (laughs) His worth is 23 million. I know we signed him for a lot. What's that? Yeah, Uh, 29.5 million, but world-class striker potential. He's going to be one of the best strikers in the game in the future, without a doubt, with that pace, dribbling ability, finishing ability. And yeah, 17 scoring pretty consistently um, at championship level. But anyway, for now, uh, forgetting all about those transfers we have got a fa cup game to play against blackburn like fa cup is a, a pretty good cup to win honestly so i want to do my best here we're on a great form after that loss against zenith uh we have won every single game so it's not just being unbeaten like you see draws against aston villa there barcelona but actually going on that run of winning again this could be a great finish to the season but anyway uh time to change up a little bit we'll bring rafe Husic. i want to see how he goes this is going to be his first official performance for us and he's coming yeah coming back from an injury needs match fitness he's lacking that you can see and obviously after selling valdez we brought him back uh zivkovic we'll drop out van Persie. oh interesting one maybe take oh chelsea i wouldn't want to sell him to a team in this league though that is the thing and Van Persie's still really, really good. He's going up in some attributes. What do I do? Do I capitalize on the interest? He's smashed in goals this season. I don't even know what to do there, man. <laughs> to be honest, what do I do? Uh, we'll just make the rotations here. Oliver, I want to give him the chances. Like, I want to, like, he's going to be one of those situations, maybe like a Liali, um, previous season like Giovinco where maybe you don't think it's a good signing and I want to play him to show you he is a good signing that's my motivation right now I want him to dominate <laughs> uh Tielemans will bring on for Pilo we'll drop Hughes back to the offensive midfield half back kind of role uh, Munir as well probably needs match fitness Depay we will rest I want to continue playing in the league like important competition so he can win that world player of the year Oh, another thing. We'll just put... I'm not even sure here. Just put Di Maria. We'll see how he goes in that kind of role. He can play anywhere. <laughs> well, actually, Lucas Romero will come in for Will Hughes. A bit more fit. Uh, awards. Some of our players got awards, but where do I have to go? We'll go Europe first, and we'll go award winners. Not best player in Europe. We don't have anyone there. Just all here. Yeah, uh, players in Spain. European golden boy. Adnan Yanazai and Depay won it for us last season <laughs> in 2015. So imagine, <laughs> yeah, this season. But anyway, well, interesting. Rooney and Anderson, like all these players, majority, yeah, the majority of them turned into amazing players. You got Van der Vaart, Rooney, Messi, Fabregas, Aguero, and then there's Anderson. <laughs> and yeah, he's currently at Norwich. Well, was he that good though? Did he have a breakout season back then? I can't remember. If you, yeah, in that in that company of a Rooney, Messi, Fabregas, Aguero, Alexander Pato, what happened to him as well? Oh, he was going to be, I remember like in FM08, he turned into an amazing striker and FM09. Around that time, then you got Balotelli, Goethe, Isco. And Goethe, who's now <laughs> on our books, coming along nicely. Uh, Pogba, Lucas Ocampos is an interesting one as well. He can actually play keeper. Very interesting that. We'll get a scout report on him. A uh, very good winger, it looks like, though. And then Depay and Yanazai. So Yanazai is on the right path. 
And hopefully he is one of those. He develops in... See, it either goes one of two ways. They develop into an average player like an Anderson or Pato, or they develop into a world-class player. And Depay and Yanazai look to be developing into that. Uh, but I think that's it for us. Uh, a golden boot. Just like most goals, we don't have anyone there, unfortunately. How about the year before? Oh, see, we had Van Persie there before. And that was it. But anyway, now we'll go to World. Because that'll be the rest of the awards. World. Right, we'll click World there, yeah. And award winners. Sook Valkow third. What's the World Golden Ball? Because I know Golden Boot is the most goals. Because I was just wondering, what's the difference between uh, the Ballon d'Or and Golden Ball? Because there's award voting like for the best player, yeah. Or is that judged by average rating? It looks to be in order of that, but I'm not sure if that's exactly it. It could be, but I could be wrong. It's obviously not goals. Because, yeah, look, Messi, 8.22, Ronaldo, 7.75, and then there's Falcao, 7.70. So if you know exactly if it's judged by that, because that's like the best player in the world. That's what the judging is. And then the Ballon d'Or is like the similar kind of thing. But either way... It's interesting that Falcao, yeah, got that for last season. Yeah, because it's not this season, of course. He got 24 goals and 27 appearances. Like, that strike rate is really, really good. Better than the other two. And he got assists as well for a strike, which is excellent. Uh, good rating. But he just hasn't worked his way into the plans. And that's really disappointing. He's going down. But I still feel we're going to utilize him for Champions League. So I want to be playing him <laughs> at the same time. Could I play him here, though? Now, he's injured right now. That's a problem. Two to three weeks. So, Falcao, hopefully, yeah, he gets back on form. But remember last season? He was like... He went on a run of like 15 games where he scored consecutively. Like, he didn't go a break of... Like, he didn't miss a game without scoring, if that makes sense. Like, he scored 15 games in a row or something just crazy. That's obviously why he got that. But, yes, Oliver. It would be great for him, like, occasion like this... You think he should have a good game against a Blackburn. He came off the bench in the last game I used him. But anyway, uh, we'll say passionately and expect nothing but a win and keep a good run going. It's probably not our best team we're playing, but it's still a really good team. Of course, we've got quality players. But I really would love Oliver to step up and be a key player. Um, after this game, I might review him. He's got some crazy stats for a guy that's not rated highly star-wise by our coaches. Oh, did you see that little move there by Tielemans? It was like a spinning turn pass. I have no idea what it's called, but check back on that to see what it exactly was. But an early goal here would be nice. It's Di Maria. Di Maria put it in. Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, what is he doing? <laughs> and they get rid of it. And it's Romero. And I'm not sure what you think of the game speed here. It probably looks slightly quick, but the setting before this seems a bit slow. So it's hard to find the exact mix that is perfect. But yeah, Munir, is that how you say his name? I've never heard his name in real life. I'm just guessing on how it looks. And he looks pretty white. <laughs> he looks a bit darker than... He should look a bit darker, but anyway. He's probably one of those players that I haven't got perfect for the skin tone, but anyway, he looks like a ghost, come on, tackle, oh, Oliver, he can tackle as well, <laughs> even with a guy with not amazing tackling stats, he does it, and here we go, Quadrado, oh, left foot cross actually, Munir Zivkovic almost, goes back to Quadrado, finish, no, Ooh. Couple good chances. Belanta apparently has taken a knock. But he should be alright. It is Belanta. He's a beast. No one can injure Belanta. Or if he has a knock, he can run it off. So let's see if we can yeah, push on. I'd like a second before half time. One nil, that's like not the most dominant performance in the world against a team of Blackburn's capability. So Tielemans puts it in. Belanta, the man I talked about. Finally scores his first of the season. I thought it's been a while for a yeah, Belanta header. And there we go. 
Tielemans, he's really stepping up now. Looks like a like a solid first yeah for a solid first teamer. Doesn't look like a young player anymore. He's stepping up, and a lot of our younger guys are like that now. And Oliver, yeah, not too amazing, but we've got some other nice performances. Uh, passionately, I'm happy the way things are going. Just, yeah, solid little talk there. And, of course, I want to keep a clean sheet. Husic, he's a wonder kid, so I would imagine if he performs well, that will help him grow. Because even if you have a young guy with potential, but if he's playing terribly, that's not going to help him grow. Because he's going to just be shot with confidence if he's playing badly. And it helps to have good players around you. It's probably not the same case for a goalkeeper, though. But obviously, more chances to keep clean sheets. So it looks good on his record. Okay, Tielemans winning at midfield. Munir finds Di Maria. Di Maria sets it up for Zivkovic. Oh, how didn't he finish? Oh, Richario. How did you not finish that? Man. We'll see what we do here, and then we'll make a few subs. We'll see yeah, who's fit or whatever, who needs to be subbed. Oliver. Finds Zivkovic. Evans falls. He's injured. Munir! Oh, Di Maria. Oh, my God, Di Maria. How didn't you finish that? <laughs> Come on. And Evans, he's an ex-United youth player. That's Corey Evans, I believe. But anyway, Zivkovic has actually been poor, surprisingly. We'll bring on RVP. Anyone else? Look at that. Tielemans. He's been great. Luke Shaw will bring off we'll bring on um titi maybe a final game for us here and yeah we'll just do two subs to now rvp so i don't want to like but there's interest from van Persie, so i'm not really sure i'm not really sure because i told like i was saying i will let him go at some point not sure if it's this season end of this season the following season when his contract runs out but i reckon now we might as well get some money for him compared to the end of next season where we just let him go for free. Leave your feedback because I'm really interested to see, especially as there's interest for him. Tielemans! Someone finish! It's still in Di Maria! Di Maria! Di Maria! It's interesting playing him as a striker, as one of those deep-lying forwards on attack, because he does create. But he's had a few chances and he hasn't really taken them. That's the problem. And right now, Tielemans, he's had a great, ga great game, but he's going to be subbed. You know, 68 condition. And who are we going to bring on here? We're going to bring on Mario Goetze. We'll try Oliver as a deep line playmaker, though, to change up his role a bit. And, of course, it's going to take him time. Like, he's not going to be the best player on the pitch <laughs> as soon as he signed. He's got to, yeah, become... F not friends, I was going to say friends. Um, Titi, that could be a departing goal. That could be a departing goal if he does leave. But yeah, like I said on yeah, um, Oliver Torres, it's going to take him time to gel with his teammates and all of that. That's the word I was looking for, gel. I was going to say fluid, but that's not really the explanation. But um, Titi, if he departs, that's one way to send him off. And we could be on the... Because yeah, if we sell him and Rojo... That's selling two guys. I did want to get rid of guys, but maybe not two centre-backs. And they're, they're both guys that can play left-back. So maybe on the lookout for another type like that. So if he can get one, and we'll get good money back. I'll have around 30 million to play with, which will be great, of course. But there's a few quality players running out of their contract. But I think, yeah, let's just go for a good centre-back to permanently sign. We'll see what the situation will be anyway. Maybe a bit weak for Champions League this season though because someone we sign you would imagine they'll be from a top team maybe if i can find someone who's not yeah who hasn't played champions league this season but yes <laughs> we'll see balant is one of those players anyway who can play left back and center back but yeah solid expected win and we shall move on and for those that forgot about it because i did as well until i just saw it there in the board uh request status uh, we are expanding the stadium i think it's by around 10k or something and that's going to be completed uh, by the 1st of the 8th, 2018. So not too far away, sometime next year. And I think it's, yeah, like I said, around an extra 10,000 seats will be pushed from, I think we're currently at like 75,000 or something like that. 75,000 all-seaters, that's going to be around 85, if I remember correctly. 
because it doesn't say how much it's planned to be. And if you look at our big games, we go fixtures, like how many... Like, if you just see this FA Cup game, how many... Okay, there wasn't... Oh, that's at Blackburn, sorry. Home games, where are we? When was the last home game? Yeah, just say against Liverpool. That's a big game as well. See, look at that. It's it's all... <laughs> the All seats are filled. It's sold out. So, especially looking at that, we'll be able to get more more sales, more ticket sales. Hopefully by an extra 10,000. Definitely the fan base is there, of course. Uh, one of the most supporters, uh, supported, if not the most supported team in the world, uh, Manchester United. So, yeah, more money in coming through uh, that avenue, hopefully uh, from next year and beyond. So, yes, uh, um, Titi is going to sign for Juve, of course. Uh, Leon uh, owed 4% of the transfer, but, yeah, that's the thing in Football Manager added now because it is realistic. So it may eventually rise, yeah, because we had that deal. We're getting like 250 per 10 league appearances, yeah. So we're going to yeah be constantly getting money uh, from this deal. Of course, if he's a key player for them, you go back to the deal. Well, you, you're watching this video anyway. I just can't remember it because I'm actually playing what exactly it was. But he's going to be leaving. He departed on a good note, really. I'm not sure if you can say we've made profit off of him because Nanny was part of the deal. But nonetheless, we paid $14 million into that, and now we've sold him. It's hard to know how much exactly, because it says $18 million transfer fee, but it could keep rising. The, if it says could eventually rise to 23.5, but with that fee of 250k, I think it was, per 10 league appearances, it's unlimited. It could keep going. So hopefully he does have a good, successful career for Juve. I just want to see... Where is he sitting? Like, I mean, where's you? How many left backs do they have? See, they don't have too many. Mate, who do they have? Oh, they got Alexandro, so he's a guy at least at left back. And then they've got a lot of centre backs. Look, they got Jaws a core as well. Is it a core? Because I got him in my Aston Villa save, of course. A core or a core ray? <laughs> I don't really know. But they've got a few centre backs, but aging ones like Chiellini. He's that guy who can play left back and centre back. Um, Titi will definitely overtake for him because he is only like 23. So, yeah, he's 23, yeah? And, yeah, he just turned in November. So, heaps of years left in him. But that means we can be on the outlook for a player. So, if we just continue one day here, got the FA Cup draw as well. And Rojo and Leon get 40% of the transfer profit. So, I just want to see what that is. They'll receive 1.6 million over the next 12 months. So, that makes sense. I knew that was the deal in place, but it's still very profitable profitable for us, that deal. And Rojo leaving as well. So we do the draw here, which is 37 teams. We get a draw against Middlesbrough. Uh, we should be beating them, just a championship side. And I want to see what's our money looking like after the Rojo deal. Should be around the low 50 millions, and we could sign someone huge, like a huge defender. A huge defender. But it's going to be hard to get a huge defender not from a Champions League team. I might have to investigate some top teams that didn't make Champions League last season. Maybe just Europa League. But yeah, I'll, I'll survey I'll survey the options. So they did sign. Um, yeah, Rojo is gone. So that's big. That is big. Sometimes that happened. And again, I searched for that affiliate club like to make money or whatever it is. But because uh, we have already got Toronto, we've got a United States... Isn't it a Toronto in Canada? But anyway, we've got an MLS team. And then we've got a J Japan one. Oh, we're still searching because you can get a Chinese one, can you, as well? But yeah, from Japan and US, that's good enough <laughs> for the time being. Uh, anything else? Oh, there was this other guy that showed before. Yeah, this Gomez guy. He doesn't look too bad as a young English player. Is he from another country? Okay, he's not. He's just... He's got a few idols, does he? He's got, yeah, Rio Ferdinand and Ludley King. So, what's his report like? His potential is to be a leading central defender. But he's not... A, I just want to splash out. He might be a good signing when you're another team. Like, lower Premier League or whatever would be. Pretty good signing, I feel. But anyway, what's our money? Oh, 51 million, lads. I feel rich. I feel rich right now. 
<laughs> but anyway, sure, when you have that big money, you think you can sign an absolutely like, amazing like attacking player or something, but that's we don't need that. See, our squad looks on a reasonable level now. But if you look at our defenders, ugh, we, we, we look weak defensively now. Oh, we have to sign another player without a doubt. And I find a player that's not... But we still got three solid centre-backs. Look at it that way as well. We've got Belanta. We've got Phil Jones and John. So you probably need four centre-backs though. Who do we have? Anyone in... Yeah, we have like all these guys loaned out. But it's perfect. Because we have 51 million, don't forget. And full-backs, yeah, not concerned. You've got the two... We got Quadrado and Raphael. So yeah, fullbacks are not a worry. We've got two in each position. You always want that. And then you got center backs that can play left back and right back. So here we're just going yeah out for an amazing center back. And it's good because these guys are still fairly young, but quality. Belant is only 23. Phil Jones is only 24. He's going to turn 25 next month. Keep that in mind. But he's absolutely beastly. And John Stone's 22. They're going to all grow together. Is, I reckon he should be improving his agility. It's only nine. So I'll just work on that specifically. And yeah, I'll throw in a few guys here. Like 51 million, there's probably not a center back that's worth more than that. So anyway, we could get someone. But yeah, I have to replace him with someone who's better than Rojo and um, Titi combined. Varane? who's injured right now, but again, that's Real Madrid, a team that's playing champ. Ooh, Gerard Pique, Barcelona, they're playing Champions League. I think bringing back to United, yeah. <laughs> David Luiz, oh. uh, Arsenal, Stefan de Vrij. See, I don't think he's that superstar. If he's been poor from them, like, he's probably a reason why they're conceding goals. Inigo Martinez? Not too bad. Is Sociedad, are they playing... Is it just Champions League or is it European football as a whole? See, not they're not playing Continental. He could be one of those guys we could sign. Yeah, just want to make sure Sociedad... They don't have a Continental competition. So he'll be one. Ooh, how about Antonio Fernandez? Just checking out, yeah, young player of theirs. Just get a scout report. Sometimes that, that's how I find youth players. Just go, yeah, to big teams and see their hot prospect. But anyway, he's got potential. Does he have potential to grow a little bit? Oh, no, he's just the leading player, and that's it. I've actually seen him sign for United in other saves I've played. But yeah, he's strong. He's a good defender, but he's been really poor for them. I'm not sure, is it just because they're poor as a team? like, as a whole, but, yeah, last two seasons, like, last season and this season, he's been really bad, but he's a good player, isn't he? What's his release clause? 35 million, we can go bang and sign him. Is he worth that much, though? And we're getting updated scout report, so he's one on the radar. This is where I want to see your feedback. I want to, yeah, sign someone that you want to see. Uh, Doria didn't, or was it, or oh, for Arsenal and FM14, I think. I can't remember 100%. Marseille, are they... Yeah, they're in Europa League. I'm not sure if that counts. May just be Champions League. Uh, Dragovic. No, these are not superstar level players. How about Laporte? From Athletic. They're in Europa League. It may be... Oh, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not going to sign someone now anyway, so you can leave your feedback on that. How about Murillo? Doesn't look too bad. Developing. What's AC Milan playing? Yeah, they're in Europa League. And Kulu's at Arsenal. But again, he's playing poorly. I'm not sure if that's just because of Arsenal. Uh, David Luiz. But again, obviously PSG is playing some kind of... I want to sign someone really good, but obviously these are the players here. These are the players that are here. Um, Masaccio, okay. Obviously not many absolute superstars. Mark Bartra develops really well, doesn't he? What's his release clause? Nah, 47 million. But we have that money. 
But honestly, I think he, uh, Inigo Martinez is the best option because he's not... I know he's gonna. we're going to be able to use him Champions League for sure. In Champions League for sure. And I'm not sure about the other ones. If they're in Europa League, does that still affect... Is it just Europa or, um, yeah, Europe football in general? European football in general? Or Manuel. Remember him in FIFA? The pacey centre-back. He was amazing. Looks all right. But anyway, I reckon... Unless there's someone lower here, like who's Tin Jedvaj. Oh, he doesn't look half bad. Can play a lot of positions. Versatile. That could be important. What's. But yeah, I would just. He would be a star player, his current ability. And he's got room to improve. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But yeah, Champions League, so we can't sign him. That is annoying. Not, not we can't sign him, sorry. It just, yeah, he can't be used. That's the difference. And an ego Martinez defensive, just general defensive ability. But yeah, this guy's got room to improve. So man, it's hard. We've got him on the short list. So that's always going to be an option. But as I said, an ego Martinez is probably the best. And he's got good mental attributes for a center back. I always know positioning and anticipation is very important. And he's strong. Good, all those six. Well, he's got. Oh, he's got sixteen for long shots as well. I'd say I wouldn't want a centre back to attempt it, but if he can score with them, yeah, <laughs> why not? So anyway, uh, we could sign him. He'll be available for that thirty-five million. We've got that money. We could bank him, and we'll still have some in the kitty remaining. So leave your thoughts anyway. Should we sign Anigo Martinez? Is there a better option you feel available? But as I said, uh, for a guy that's not playing European football for sure, not Champions League or Europa League. Uh, he will be able to play for us for our Champions League campaign. So leave your thoughts on that anyway. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys next time.